Hello and welcome back to High Peak Education. I would like to perform a calculation about rotational dynamics, namely how torque relates to rotational inertia and angular acceleration, and then use that information to make some rotational kinematics calculations. So let's look at this problem. A motor produces a torque of 35 newtons times meters. It is used to accelerate a disk of radius 2.0 meters. It has a mass of 12 kilograms and it is initially at rest. What is the angular acceleration alpha in radians per second squared? B, what is the number of revolutions made by the wheel after a time of five seconds? All right, so let's write down our knowns. Looks like the torque is 35 newtons per meter. So tau is equal to 35 newtons times meters. I said newtons per meter, but I meant newtons times meters. So that's a force at a distance, at like some lever arm, at some radius. It's used to accelerate a disk, so alpha is not zero, but we also know it's a disk of radius two meters. So r is equal to 2.0 meters, and we know it's a disk, so I'm thinking that we need the rotational inertia of a disk. Now you can look this up. It's a solid body in solid body rotation, and it's an extended object. So the equation goes like 1 half m r squared. So that's also the same thing as a solid cylinder shape. So we also know what the mass is. The mass is 12 kilograms. And it's initially at rest, so we're assuming that omega initial is equal to zero radians per second. That's the initial angular velocity. What is the angular acceleration alpha in radians per second squared? Well, let's see. I think that if this is the only torque, then tau is equal to the net torque. So tau this torque should equal to, now remember, tau is rotational force. So that's rotational mass times rotational acceleration. So that should be I, which is the rotational inertia, times alpha, which is the angular acceleration. And this is of the disk. So we just need to divide by I to get alpha. Now tau we know, and then what we know for the rotational inertia of the disk is it's one half m r squared. So we can substitute in all the values. So tau is 35.0 newtons times meters, that's the torque on this uh, disk, and then 1 half m, the mass is 12 kilograms, and then the radius is 2.0 meters squared. Okay, let's see if we can work this out. So I think this is 35 divided by, let's see, 2 squared is 4, times a half is two, so that's 24. So we need 35 divided by 24. Let's just do 35 divided by 24. Okay, so it looks like we've got about 1.46, that's radians per second squared. So 1.46 radians per second squared is our answer for the angular acceleration. Okay, fine, that takes care of part A. Now part B, it says, what is the number of revolutions made by the wheel in a time of five seconds. Well, the idea is that we have this angular acceleration, we also have the initial angular velocity, we want to know the number of revolutions, so we want to have delta theta, but we also know the time, so the time that elapses, sorry, the time that elapses is five seconds, and this is now rotational kinematics. So we want to find the displacement if we know the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time. So in other words, the final angular velocity we're going to ignore. So that's the one rotational kinematics variable we're going to ignore because we don't care how fast it's moving at the end of this angular acceleration. So that suggests to us the kinematic equation we should use, and that's the displacement curve for rotation. So that's delta theta is equal to omega initial times t, 
plus one half alpha t squared. So that's displacement, angular displacement, is equal to angular velocity times time plus one half angular acceleration times time squared. So I think we can put all the values in. And by the way, since the initial angular velocity was zero, this entire term is zero. So I think it's just going to be one half times alpha, which is 1.46 radians per second squared times the time of five seconds squared. So 0.5, same thing as a half, times 1.46 times five squared. There we go. So we've got 18.25, and let's go with three significant digits. So 18.3, 18.3 radians. And we're not quite done yet because that's the angular displacement in radians. We need to get that in revolutions. So when we go from radians and we convert to revolutions, we recall that for every one revolution, there's exactly two pi radians. Now remember, when you're in the calculator, I'll show these steps, you need to make sure that you do 18.3 divided by parenthesis, 2 times pi. I've seen many students do 18.3 divided by 2 pi without a parenthesis. The calculator would divide by 2, then multiply by pi. So that's incorrect. Be careful with the order of operations. So we get 2.91 or so revolutions. So about 2.91 revolutions is the number of revolutions this disk makes. Okay, so I think this concludes our problem and our video. Thank you very much for watching High Peak Education. Please smash that like button if you enjoy this content. Please subscribe to the channel to grow the channel. Please also share this amongst your social network and I will see you in the next video.